morning all and welcome to a, uh, another little tutorial i just think at the minute we're living in difficult times i mean obviously if you're watching this and it's a couple of months on hopefully we, we've got through the worst of it but obviously at the minute it's difficult times people are, are being ill um people having to self-isolate people are on lockdown and generally we're all struggling so what i want to do is try and make a few little tutorials have a little get together um obviously most of you know i run workshops so for me it's like a little workshop online i'd love it if you could join in with me maybe if you watch it once just to see what you're going to need and and just join in with me i'm going to try and do as much as i can real time Obviously, you know me, I'll chat along as we're going, just because I think if you're stuck at home and you're on your own, sometimes it's nice to feel that actually you're not on your own, that somebody else is there with you. Loneliness is a very hard thing, and I personally think it's so hard if you feel lonely. Um, so please, um, you know, let's craft along together, let's build up our community, let's try and help each other. It is so important, especially at the minute, more important than ever at the minute. So what I thought I'd do is add, I've got a sample here that I've made and I thought I'd just have a go at reproducing it to show you how I made it. Well, when I say reproduce it, obviously it'll be something similar, you know what I'm like. I do get a bit carried away and uh, go off piste a little. So that's my finished sample. I'm going to use Distress Oxide inks, but whatever inks of choice you're happy with, you go with that. I'm just going to move that to one side so I can put it in front of me and see where I'm going. The stamp I'm going to use is this one from All and Create. It's number 266. It's by Tracy Evans and it's called Daisy Elegance. And I must admit, I have used it quite a lot. What's lovely is you actually have two separate stamps. So the stamps themselves come as two separate large stamps which is lovely because for me I just feel I've got almost twice as much value from the stamp. Now I'm going to peel my stamp off and put it on somewhere I have one of my stamp blocks. But what I actually need for this is I've got my piece of card ready and I'm going to add my ink first and in my head I want to know whereabouts the stamp design is going to be because I actually want to add the colour and if you look on the finished design we've got deeper colour roughly in the centre of where the flower is so in my head I want to that's my idea and yes you could stamp first but for me I just like to have an inky background so I'm going to add the colour first it's just the way I like to do it there's, there's no right or wrong way just this for me is the way I, I just like to work so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my deepest colour in the middle. So excuse me while I find my red. So I'm using Candied Apple for this. And what I'm going to do is ink my blending tool up. And just roughly, the acetate comes in so useful for this. So just roughly where the centre of my flower is going to be, which is there. I'm just going to roughly put a dot in the middle. So that gives me an idea of where the centre of my flower is going to be and I'm just going to blend that out. I'm going to add some more ink. Now, as normal, when I put my ink on, I use circular motions to add the ink just because for me, I find it adds the ink more evenly. And again, I've got very old blending tools with um, blending pads. There's certainly no need to put a new one on. And in fact, if you need a new one, do put plenty of ink on it and let it seize and let it rest before using it. Because the more ink they have on and the better used I find, you have less chance of getting lines. I do find as well, this is a great way to um, practice your blending. Because at the end of the day, we're just making a background. So it is a good way to practice. So I've put my red in the middle. And again, what I tend to do, I've just got to watch a dog go off camera here. What I tend to do is pop my lids in the lid and just pop them next to each other. Now I'm going to go for an orange. So I'm going into the spiced marmalade. So again, a very old orange blending tool with a pad. Circular motions. And I'm just going to go around that red area. And circular motions again. 
blend it round. I'm sure they, I'm working that hard blending. I'm sure it's actually wobbling the camera, so I must apologise. But I suppose it makes you feel like you're in the room with me, doesn't it? That we're actually crafting together. Now I'm just going to work on the area around where the red and the orange meet. So I'm just working. And again, the camera will move because, again, for me, you need elbow grease. So this is where you really do blend it. Next, we're going into the yellow. And for this, I've gone fossilised amber. Just because for me, it's a nice, almost muddy, it's a browny yellow. And I just find it blends well with orange. Now, I like to, if possible, a piece of tissue to hold. Just because your hands, they do get, well, for me, hot and sweaty when I'm doing things like this. Because obviously, as you know, I am a nervous sort of person. Um, but also, you could have ink on your hand. Or, and there's nothing worse than getting that on your work. So where you can, try and... Oh, my stamp's just fallen on the floor. Never mind. Just missed Eric as he's lying there, but there we go. So I'm going to blend some yellow here. And I'm going to blend yellow down here. I want a little bit of room at the bottom because I want to add some brown. So I'm just going to turn my work round. Add a little bit more yellow. And then what I'll do is go in the area where the yellow and the orange blend just, I'm not adding any more orange onto my blending tool, but I'm just going to go over that to try and get a nice blend. And then last of all, moving on to our fourth one, which is the brown. And I just want to add, I think this one's vintage photo, yep. Yeah. And I just want to add a little bit of brown at the base. And then my brown's going to be my accent colour that I'm going to add all the way around the edge. So... And for some reason with my brown, I do tend to get a few little marks if you look when I'm blending. And I think what it is, is I think I've got some glitter or something like that on my blending tool. But it, it doesn't matter. We're just making a background. So to be honest, I just go with it. It's, I think we worry sometimes too much. Because what I'm going to do there is I've got my brown, go back in with my fossilised amber and just go over that join between the brown I mean you are going to be stamping on top of this so like I say it is a background so it is a great way to practice your blending knowing that you're going to stamp on top of it and to be honest nobody's going to notice because we're going to splat some water you know me ladies and gentlemen when I add the water that just really if you've got a few marks put some water on nobody will ever know just going to add a little bit more brown. I just think it needs a little bit more darker just to frame it. And again, that's something that you'll just get used to knowing. Now, the last thing I think I'm going to do, I'm just going to go in with this fossilised amber. I'm just going to go over where the orange is just to tone it all so nicely. Now, I've just got to pick my stamp up off the floor. Bear with me. It's a good thing about doing things live, isn't it? So, if I just hold this back over to give me an idea, yes, can you see? I just think that looks lovely, the colour. So, I think I might just intense the red a little, but I'm loving the way it's looking with the brown perfect here. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm just thinking a little bit more, slightly a little bit more red, just deeper in here if we can. Just a bit more intense. So, let's just lift it up again. Yeah, see here, I'm, I'm liking the red here, just maybe a bit more down here. So, just widen that little bit. And then last time, yeah, I, th I think that really warms this area up, so I'm happy with that. Now, while I just put the lids on, or my ink pads, you could, because I want to splash some water on it, I could splash some water now, but the thing is, then I would have to wait for it to dry to do my stamping. So for me, um, I sometimes work in a certain way because I find it easier to teach workshops that way. So for me, I'm going to do the stamping now. And because I'm using a permanent ink, I can then add the water after. And it just eliminates that bit of having to wait for it to dry. So what I'm going to do is get... Now, you know me, I like... A magazine and some copy paper to stamp on just because this is a large stamp and I am notoriously 
I'm a bit of a little weakling and I'm pretty rubbish at stamping. So for me, I have ways of getting round it. So I'm using a VersaFine Claire ink pad, the ink pad of choice. It hopefully will pick up all the detail. It is slow drying, so there's no mega rush with it being a big stamp. I do love the detail in this. Tracy, you've done well with this one, kid. I love this. So I'll give it a good inking, especially in the middle there. I want all that detail. Right, so that's my ink. Sometimes, if you don't get good impression, it could just be something as simple that actually you need a new ink pad. I found that recently. So, just going to put that, line it up. Again, it's beautiful. You can see through your block. Right, press down. Just going to move it in shot for you. I hope I haven't smudged it. Just my look, once it? I have to do all that blending if I've smudged it. Right, I'm actually going to stand up because I do like to stand up. For me, again, because I'm little, little five foot one-y. I find standing up works, probably doesn't work well on television or on the uh, YouTube, but hey ho, it's all about being live and being true, isn't it? What they say, warts and all, I find as I get older, getting more things like that, you know, wrinkles are creeping in and, but there again, it's a sign I'm getting older, isn't it? So, a good press. Don't take both hands off at once. Try and keep a good press. Remember, with your Roll and Create acrylic blocks, they are flexible. I always say they're more flexible than me, which, to be fair, is very true. So, often with a large stamp, it would be this area in the middle that wouldn't stamp. So, again, what if you can keep a bit of pressure on there and lift here, that should. I love doing this live because you go, that should. <laughs> Fingers crossed. So, I reckon we've given that plenty of time to rest again. You want the ink to soak into the card. So, we've given that a good chance, haven't we? I think we're all a bit bored with that now, missus. So, hold it in the middle and peel it off. There we go. So, I can slide back down, sit back down, move my copy of paper. And there we go. So, it is worth that thing of putting... Plenty of ink on, spend any time pressing it, don't rush it. I, I just think that's lovely. I mean, for me, I could leave that as it is, but obviously we want to add a bit more. So the next bit I would do is I've got a fan brush here in some water and I'm going to flick and get some nice faux bleaching in the background. Now, the other tip I like to do is just pop my finger in the water and just add a few larger, almost, areas of faux bleaching. Just adds to that background. Now, again, at home, you would leave this. If you can let it happen naturally, you get a much better result. Now, if the camera can pick it up, you will see it is starting. Look at those areas where it is starting to work here. what I will do is I am going to blot it just so that I can get on and show you the next bit but as I say at home I'd be tempted to just leave that a couple more minutes and really let the faux bleaching take effect I'll just quickly pop the heat gun over that just to do a quick As I say, at home, go make yourself a nice coffee. Maybe sit in the garden for a few minutes. So, that's just got that. As I say, doesn't it look beautiful? So, what I'm going to do now is, I've got some... You could use any pencils. I'm using some ink tense pencils, and I just want to add a little bit of colour here to the stem. So I'm just going straight in. And again, I am colouring over the top of my oxide inks. That's fine. You'll find it works really well. Just going to add one green, and then we'll go in 
got a nice light green here just to mix the colours, give a bit more dimension and depth. Now with it being a, an intense pencil, I can just go in with a, a damp paintbrush and just move the colour a little. Now, next bit is you can either use charcoal pencil, we're going to add the shading. Again, I'm using a water reactive pencil. So what I'm going to do now is if I bring the finished one here, we're going to add, you see the darkness here that almost makes it, this is completely flat, but we want to make it look like it is a little bit of 3D. So you see the dark round here and on here. As I say, you could use either charcoal pencil if all else fails, if all you had was some intense pencils or some colouring pencils, use the black pencil. But as I say, I've got one here and it's a water reactive pencil. And if I show you with one bit, so I'm just going to go round. So first of all, I would look where I want the dark and I want it round the centre here. You see already that comes to life more. And then what I would do here, this petal in the middle, because it's in the middle, it would have shade. It's going to be standing proud, isn't it? This one also and in my head I don't want to go around all of them because it would almost look too much so I'm going to pick the ones so here we've got another one look that are definitely standing forward and would have that shade underneath them now on these ones on the outside in my head and this is just the way I work it makes it easier for me in my head I'm thinking that the lights coming from over here so anything at the bottom or on the right is where my shade's going to be so with this petal here for instance I don't want to put it all the way around I would just put the shade to the right of the petal and underneath the same here so we're just going underneath the stem again I'm just going to put a little bit underneath this one here and I'm just going to do the ones here to make it look that the lights over here and casting that shadow just underneath them this one will give a little bit again like I say I don't want to do them all I just want to I'm working my way on this side I'm just going to pick this one and I'm not looking at my original because I don't want to definitely do the same ones I did last time I, you just go with the flow I think we'll have that one under there I'll have a bit of shade and if I look this one here is on top of this one so what I'm thinking is we'd have a bit of shade there and then in the middle Quite nice to have the depth in the middle so if I just show you so I'm gonna take some water I always like a piece of kitchen roll just to take the complete wetness off the other tip is if you've got a paintbrush and it's not as fine as you want at the end if you roll it you actually get it to a fine point so again dip it in the water take a little bit off and then I'm just going to activate this and you'll see how it looks even darker and almost makes it more of a, a smudgy edge which is what we want we're just dragging that colour out back in the water take a bit off drag a bit of the colour down and I just think with the orange and the red in the middle this really intensifies and looks quite almost fiery Now, I am doing this a little bit quicker than I would normally, just because I don't want you to get bored seeing the same thing. A little bit more there. And again, my suggestion would be to do that amount. Check with just, did I do that one? And then stand back and have a look and think, oh, that one there, that could do with some underneath look. And then a bit of water. Yeah, just drag that there. And again, I think here you'd possibly get a bit more shade in that area. Water, tap it off. Just drag it this way a little. So almost feather it. See, I think the difference there, if I pick that up, can you see how it's really starting to look 3D? And it's really starting to pop off the page. So I'm just thinking up here, I need a little bit more up here and there. So just building up. It's just such a lovely thing to do this. Just put a little bit there. 
it's really starting to look that those petals aren't just flat. We want them to look like they're really, sometimes just the odd line can just, like I say, you don't want to do it all because you don't want to spoil it. And it just all look the same. A little bit here, these are underneath, so these are going to be in shade. Yeah, I like that. I think I'm going to leave that. I think I'm happy with that. Oh, one more. We'll just go around this one. See, I say that and then... But no, come on, walk away. Don't overcook it. You don't any of those pizzas where everything looks like it's just thrown on. No, I'm definitely going to leave that. I'm happy with that. Right, paintbrush back in there. Now, the centre. You could leave the centre as it is. On my finished one... I've got this sort of centre, which I just thought looked really fun. And to make that, I've got some Posca pens. Now, again, those of you who know me at workshops know I just love Posca pens. I have a full set here, different colours. Um, and again, a quick shake. And all I'm going to do is dab randomly. Beauty of Posca pens is they go on ink, they go on top of paint. And they almost, when you actually feel that, it almost looks quite dimensional, quite domed. So I'm just going to add some, a variety of colours. Obviously I'm going to go for the red, uh, the, I'm going to add red, yellow, because obviously we've got oranges. But I'm just going to add a little bit of purple, just to spice it up a bit. I think I might even add some green, I think, because we've got green on the stem. And I'm just randomly dotting the colours and then I've saved red because I want it predominantly little shake and then some dots of red I just love the overall effect of this I think you get into certain things don't you and Posca pens at the minute are my real tool to play with so I'm loving that what I am going to do is I've got a finer white one here. I'm going to add a bit of highlight on the stem and then I think we'll just go for a little bit of highlight on some of these. We'll just go for... Again, don't overcook it. Don't do it on all of them. And then a few little in the middle. And then we'll just add some splats of the Posca. So give it a good, like I say, pretend it's a whip. Do the whipping action. Yeah, don't want too many. And that's what I would do then is add a sentiment if you want. And also, obviously, the finished one I have matting laid onto some card the last finishing touch that I've done on the finished one is I've added some either clear glass or glossy accents which obviously there's no point in putting on now because you won't see it dry just into the centre to give it a bit 3D and just so if you can pick it up if I just take, tilt it slightly can you pick it up just here so it looks like little drops of rain on the flower but that's that's all there is to it look and I just think it's such a lovely technique. For me, I just enjoy blending that ink and then stamping on top of it. This is such a gorgeous uh, stamp for this. So thank you for joining me. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave me a comment. And um, if you do any work, I'd, I'd love to see what you do. Take care, everybody. Please do, do, do take care. Lots of love and hugs. Bye.